the Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. The Dave Hooker Show. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Objective insight, expertise, top guest. Available on YouTube, Apple, and the Off the Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Also available on offthehooksports.com. I compute and obey. Now to Dave Hooker. Ready. Well, that was something. Man, things have changed drastically since we last spoke to you. Tennessee no longer the hottest team in the basketball world on the men's side. And on the women's side, Kelly Harper unveils her new ghost defense. We've got a big program on tap today, including the Vols football team. You might care about them as well. They are about to open spring practice. We'll look back at the Kentucky loss for the men. Also, is this Tennessee basketball team tournament ready? Because it's time. It's SEC tournament time. It is NCAA tournament time. You better be ready because what happens if you lose one game? You're done. Now, my guy right here, the one, the only, Caleb Calhoun got people fired up on the interweb calling for Kelly Harper's job immediately and even before it gets to the point in which Harper makes the NCAA tournament. We shall discuss that. Also, with Tennessee football defensive line preview, and we'll talk some SEC Big 10 in a 14-team format. So a big show lined up. Hit that like and subscribe button. We greatly appreciate that. Like and subscribe, as Jeremy says. Dylan, thank you, sir, for being on board. We appreciate you. Go ahead and chime in, and we'll go ahead and start it today with poll question. Caleb, first of all, though, let me get your thoughts uh, on the weekend briefly as we're going to dive into it. But um, my, oh, my, a much different feel uh three days since we last spoke oh you want my opinion but you don't care about my welfare you didn't care uh, to ask how i am how are you doing Kim? <laughs> i am great i will say this is a i just wanted to point out this is such an exciting time of year for me in general because it's like march madness and like the march tournament to me is like the transition away from winter after the dark days of winter and you're finally getting some sun and well, it's, started with and it's even for a football guy like me it's it's my favorite two days of the sporting calendar that first Thursday and Friday of March. I used to uh, make sure that my calendar was cleared. Fortunately, being a sports writer, you say, I got to watch these games. You know, I got to. Um, so go yeah. ahead and uh, get on board and let's, let's dive into it now. And we'll ask you today's tough question. It is on our YouTube page where you can go ahead and answer that poll. Sometimes the poll is different than today's tough question, but not the case today. Today's tough question is now. Today's tough question. Take a side. Take a stand. The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. All righty. Let's get started here. Today's tough question. What was most disappointing, the Vols Senior Day no-show or the Lady Vols Ghost Defense? Hadn't seen that before from Kelly Harper. If you had to guess, what would you say? We want you to vote on our YouTube page now. So, Lady Vols or the men, what was most disappointing about the weekend? Oh, it was the the Lady Vols. Um, Tennessee had already accomplished everything it needed to accomplish in the regular season in men's basketball. Saturday was just icing on the cake. And we'll get into breaking down that game. But there was nothing to upset Tennessee basketball fans. The Lady Vols. They had a chance to knock off the best team in college basketball and prove that they actually are a force in the NCAA tournament. And they that was just an awful choke job in the last five seconds. One of the worst choke jobs I think I've ever seen in the sport. And you say ever? I'm not going to argue see. with that. I, 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 I'm not arguing with that. Like, like literally, like right up there with Pete Carroll deciding to throw the ball with Russell Wilson instead of handing off to Marshawn Lynch. Like right up there. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with you at all. And it's brought to you by Boundless Moving. Today's tough question from a two hour minimum to turnkey operations. They've got you covered. Their motto, personal service without limits, uh, just their tagline. It's part of who they are. It's their DNA. Boundless Moving, Boundless Moving 
in Charlotte and East Tennessee. <laughs> Boundless moving is absolutely fantastic. So let's take a look at the poll question. And right now here is <laughs> and actually if you can give us an update, uh, Caleb, as it sounds like Caleb's uh, picked up smoking over the weekend. Caleb, can you yeah. give us can you give us an update on the poll question? Uh, yeah, so looking at the poll question right now, um, it's the Lady Vols ghost defense has 76% as far as what was more disappointing as opposed to the senior day no show. And I love the way you phrase that because it was a it was a ghost defense. I, I've never seen that alignment before. We'll get into it, but yeah, that's that was the most disappointing to everybody. Well, let's let's take a look uh back at that Tennessee Kentucky game and discuss if Tennessee's tournament ready. First, we get to four downs, and it's brought to you by our good friends at Dynasty Pools and Spas. Their showroom in Athens is fantastic, and they deliver. Four Downs brought to you by Dynasty Spas, the most comfortable spas made in the United States of America, right here in East Tennessee. Drop in for the all-new showroom in Athens, Dynasty Spas, perfect for all four seasons. Four Downs presented by Off the Hook Sports. All righty, so Four Downs will hop in the hot tub with Coop. Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. First down, Coop. Coop here. First down. Thank you very much. Did Kentucky reveal anything? Did they reveal how to beat Tennessee? Is anything public knowledge that wasn't public knowledge three days ago? Absolutely not. They didn't. I mean, yeah, Kentucky revealed how to beat Tennessee by shooting, what was it, 53% from three, having that little kid Shepard off the bench come in and go seven of 10 from the three-point line, having Edwards go four of seven from the three, having Austin Reeves go three of five. Truth of the matter is, Kentucky was red-hot shooting, and Tennessee had exerted so much energy in those other three games. They weren't the, they didn't show the defensive aggression they typically are able to show in games and they still would have pulled it out if Kentucky wasn't the hottest team in, in, in the world on Saturday. So, no, they didn't reveal any formula to beat Tennessee. No, they, they, they kind of expose themselves as being underachievers because Kentucky is incredibly athletic down low. They don't like to play defense until Saturday, basically, and then they play defense in the front court, and the rest of the guys suddenly became great shooters. You're right, Roto 22, shoot 90%. From three, you'll do pretty well also, there. Also, were they really exposed themselves? I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Did oh, I? Go ahead. Uh, were they really exposed themselves is how bad John Calipari is in closing out games in the last two minutes. I don't know how many times I've seen him almost blow a lead like that with the last two minutes because when teams like bring in the full court press and switch up the defense, this isn't the first time he struggled to get the ball past half court. And he almost lost because of his terrible coaching in the last minute. Well, now – Travis brings up a good point. You mentioned Calipari. He should have gotten ejected. I thought so, too, as well, from a couple of people that were at the game that said there were some very coarse language uh, exchanges there. What down, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. Brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. All guard scoring. That's what Kentucky did, which is pretty phenomenal when you think about it. Uh, their guard scored all of their points. So is that – a newfound concern perimeter defense. No, I think Tennessee's perimeter defense is fine. I think it was just tired on Saturday. And I also think that, and again, this is a big part of it. I, I think it was mentally drained on Saturday, but more importantly, I think Kentucky was just that red hot. Look, I'll say this part of being an NCAA tournament team is you have to, and we'll talk about this is you have to overcome any type of thing you can overcome. But look, I, I, I think the greatest teams of all time in college basketball would lose a game to a Kentucky team that shot like that from three on Saturday. No, pretty good. All right. What down, Coop? Tennessee center Cooper Mays here. Third down. Santiago Vescovi didn't score a point on single uh, on senior day. Not a single point on senior day. Is it time to look at Vescovi and think that anything you get in March from him is basically a bonus. I hate to be mean because I know his grandmother passed away. I don't want to sound like a jerk, Caleb, but I got to be honest with you. I, I think this team right now, he's almost, almost, well, he is. He's the spot-up shooter who is having trouble finding his way in this offense with a new scorer who can create. Um, I I think if they get if they get a game in which they get 16 points out of him, they win easily. They win by 40 points in the NCAA tournament. But they could also 
win by 40 points, and he scores two, which seems more likely at this point. I think Santiago Vescovi is the type of guy you keep out there because you just never know when you're going to have that moment where you need him. And then he just happens to be ready to go off that day. It reminds me of Dave, you're a Celtics fan. So you remember this well. Ray Allen had to take a significant backseat to Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, didn't he, when he went to Boston? Yes. And he, he had major slumps, didn't he, in parts of the year because of that. But there was always that moment when things were going wrong and Ray Allen was happened to be on shooting that day. Didn't that happen? And that's when you went to him. Smoky Mountain Red read my mind, speaking to a source close to the program, and said that it just feels like something's mental with San, uh, Santi. It just feels like whether it's emotional loss or he's still dealing with the loss of his grandmother or it's that he's going to end up playing in Europe anyway and the NBA is not a real option. Because, I mean, he didn't know who Tennessee was five years ago. I mean, let's be real frank, or six years ago before he was recruited. So I've I've got to wonder if he's able to turn it around in, in time for March and, and find his way. But it's a confidence issue. I don't have any doubt about it. So fourth down we'll get to. What down, Coop? All SEC center Cooper Mays here. Fourth down. If the Vols lose a game – like they lost on Saturday to a red hot team. Is that okay in the NCAA tournament? You just couldn't avoid it. And it's a single loss elimination tournament. It's fourth down, four downs brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spots. Having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard dynasty pools and spas their showroom is open in athens right off the interstate you can stop by and check out the best hot tubs and spas in the market and then delivery yes they can do that's knoxville or chattanooga they've got complete support spa cover and chemicals to keep your spa bubbling at its best they also have pool chemicals as well dynasty pools and spas amazing discounts for first responders military and even some blemish models it can save you a ton and no one will ever notice mention off the hook sports get 500 dollars off mention off the hook sports get 500 dollars off dynasty pools and spas go to dynasty pools and spas.com or stop by that showroom in athens dynasty pools and spas.com dynasty pools and spas all right what say you, Caleb? You're the one who's sounding like a little bit like a Rick Barnes apologist all of a sudden. And you don't seem to think there's any cause for big time concern about the Vols and the way they played against Kentucky. It was more what Kentucky did. So if the Vols get bounced early in the tournament by a team that's just red hot after the season they've had, let's say Sweet 16, is that okay? No, because it's different if they get bounced in the tournament with this happening. This was Tennessee playing, again, Tennessee had to play four straight top 15 teams. The first three were all de facto SEC regular season title elimination games, which was a goal. And two of them were on the road. They won all three. They mentally drained themselves before facing Kentucky on Saturday. And then Kentucky got red hot shooting the ball. If Tennessee loses in the NCAA tournament, they won't have the excuse of having mentally drained themselves. Because here's the truth, and this is, and I, I am going to stick with this. As hot as Kentucky was shooting the ball, if Tennessee showed the aggression on the perimeter defense that they had shown all year, they still win that game on Saturday. It lacked on Saturday because they were so drained. They were ready for conference split, the conference tournament, the NCAA tournament. I give them a break on that because it's a regular season game. If that happens in the NCAA tournament, though, then that's a really big problem. And that'll go back to my other larger narrative, which is that Rick Barnes has not addressed depth the way he should on this team. And he's been running his starters too much. I think it was just one game. It was three ranked teams and three day and three straight ranked teams that mentally drained them before the Kentucky game. They're not going to see that in the NCAA tournament. You know this, Dave. Your Tennessee's at 11. All the first couple of rounds are going to see average opponents at best. Nope, you're, you're right. And Tennessee it should not face another team until unless they get a bad draw till the elite eight or final four that has any sort of athleticism like Kentucky, right? Exactly. Yeah. They, I mean, they're not going to get, it's really hard to see at the very least elite eight. I'm with you. I think Tennessee now has a, 
Now, you put them in the West Bracket as a number one seed. They could end up facing a tough number four seed. And if, if they're a number two seed anywhere else, they could face a tough number three seed. But I don't see... At, at the very least, the first weekend, that should be a, 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 a breather for Tennessee, shouldn't it? The entire first weekend should be a breather. No, absolutely. I, I agree. It should be a, a breather. Um, but I do think you can... It's tough to say this with, what, 30-plus years of Rick Barnes coaching experience and history that we all know. You can still run into a red-hot shooting 16 seed or 15 seed. So I want to say it's okay in kind of a Tom Izzo mold as he's lost early in the tournament before, but he's also had success in the tournament. So we don't think about that as much. He's what won two national titles. No, just I want to say it's, I want to say it's okay because that's the way the sports play, but I'm with you, Caleb. I'm having a lot of difficulty thinking to myself. I, I'm, I'm even thinking a short week, a Thursday, Saturday, if they get that draw, let's say they're, a two, and then they would play the winner of a. You just, you just uh, said seven it. and ten, a winner of a seven and ten C. So it. No, I'm gonna go with you. I'm, I mean, I don't think it's okay at all. Well, and all, yeah, and also remember this: yes, a 16 C that gets red hot shooting, or even a seven to ten C that gets red hot shooting. There's no reason Tennessee shouldn't be able to match. Is not built to be able to match their scoring this year, in the tournament, which is to say they. And that's where they're different from years past. Is they have in the in previous years they have those offensive dry spells under Rick Barnes. You know those times I'm talking about, right? Where they go five minutes without a bucket, right? And, Absolutely. Um, and so I think that's, I, I think that's the, the difference with this team is if a team is red hot shooting the ball, Tennessee should have the horses to offensively keep up. They just should. I'm, I, I agree. W one other thing that I'm curious about with this Tennessee basketball team is, I, I believe. I believe they found how to best use Dalton Connect. Though my concern is that there are times they rely on him a little bit too much. Caleb, is is that a concern? Brought to you by our friends at BetUS. BetUS, 125% bonus on your first three deposits. Click right below. Click right below your first three deposits. BetUS, and you get the 10% gamblers insurance as well click right below bet us caleb thoughts i don't think it's that big of a deal how much they rely on dalton people are saying that but like we're, we're forgetting zakai ziegler scored 17 points on saturday i know dalton connect scored 40 had a heck of a game but zakai ziegler did score 17 and jonas adu had 11 points and eight rebounds by the way first game tennessee lost in the sec play where jonas adu scored double figures um all year but yeah, I, I got to say that I think – I I don't think the problem was that. I think they want that from Dalton Connect because he can just score at will so much. I think the problem that stood out to them was their perimeter defense. Kentucky just shot red hot, and their perimeter defense was a concern – was a bit of an issue. I don't think their perimeter defense is going to be that much of an issue in, when tournament time comes. I mean, this team still scored 81 points, so they still showed up offensively. Now you can make the case, and Dave, I think you have, that – Kentucky, this is not your typical Coach Calipari team in that they don't play defense well at all. So maybe they should score 81 points. Maybe they should have scored more than 81 points in that regard. Well, they decided they were a bad defensive basketball team until Saturday, and suddenly they became a good team. So I think there was a little bit of a revenge factor from the rough loss, and I get that. Um, again, I'll remind you, bet US 125% bonus. It's fantastic on your first three deposits. America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. That's hot. It is that 125% bonus. All right. Uh, now we get to... I feel kind of dumb asking this question after a Saturday game against Kentucky that was pretty brutal. But... Is Tennessee's basketball team tournament ready, yay or nay, Caleb Calhoun? Yes, they're absolutely ready. They're absolutely tournament ready. Now, I don't want to say tournament ready, which is to say, like, if they played a game today, they'd be ready to go. Okay, I think they need a little bit of time to just mentally recover. It was such a grind towards the end of the season. But I think they're tournament ready. I think the most important thing for them is to 
And this is very, very, very controversial. I'll split the baby with Ron Slay, who we talked to on Friday. I won't say rest your starters, but I will say give very minimal effort in the SEC tournament. Treat it like preseason basketball. Is that fair? Where you just try to stay in rhythm? Yeah, but I don't. I don't think you can really do that, Caleb. I don't think that a competitor's mind is made like that. I think you saw one of those Jerry Green teams that they took the SEC tournament about as serious as a banana peel on the highway. And what happened in the NCAA tournament? I mean, there's something to while the yeah, SEC wait, Bobby Knight has five on, national- on, on, while the SEC tournament is not important. It is a simulation of the NCAA tournament in the logistical things that you go through. Yes, but then there's Bobby Knight, who openly talked about never caring about conference tournaments, just not even giving it at all, his all at all. And he's got five national titles, or he, ha- he, he had five national titles at Indiana. So I don't think that's Jerry Green's team. I don't think they were not competitively ready for the NCAA tournament. I think Jerry Green didn't bother to do any scouting reports on who they were playing in the NCAA tournament. So you just don't do scouting reports, and that sends the message uh, to your team. Probably would do so. I think they're tournament ready. I think they needed a break. I, you have to look at the run that they've been on for the, those last four games to go three and one. If I would have told you before Auburn, Kentucky, South Carolina, A and M, right? Yes. Yep. Uh, if I would have told you that they would be three and one after that. Wouldn't you have taken that at the time? Not only three and one winning the first three to clinch the outright regular season title before even playing their final game. By the way, it was uh, Alabama, not A&M. They did play A&M though before that whole stretch. So Auburn, Kentucky, South Carolina and Alabama, but yeah. Um, Yeah. Three and one and clinching the outright SEC regular season title. No one's going to complain about that. I think they're totally fine. I think that they just, yeah, they, I'll say this. You're right. Where the competitive drive comes in and you saw this on Saturday, what I'm saying they should do for the SEC tournament, I think they did for Kentucky, honestly, until the last minute. Caleb, I've asked you before who the most important player on this team is, haven't I? You have. And you said who? Jonas Adu. Okay, I'm going to ask you the player you're most concerned about in 30 seconds. F-150 Ford Ford Super Cab, 44992. A 2023 Ford Escape all-wheel drive, 30,952. 2023 F-150 Ford Ford Super Crew XLT, 549. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. It's Viscovi. I think the biggest concern with Viscovi, I think it's almost fine if he just disappears because he did so against Kentucky, he didn't score a point on senior night, and they almost overcame a terrible showing to win. I think what the biggest concern is Viscovi with his confidence, guys. What if he has to hit a shot late to keep the balls from getting eliminated? That is my biggest concern, that that moment happens, that Dalton drives down, and he can't find anybody, and he kicks it out, three, and Viscovi has a wide-open look, two. He has time to get it off. Defense. Eh, it's okay. One, ball in the air. I don't know that he has the confidence to make that shot. Dave, do you believe in the law of averages? Are you going to say he's due? What if he just wasted his really, really, really horrible shooting nights on the last two games? Got him out of the way. I don't believe in due. Like, that's a baseball term. Like, he's due. He's, you know, 0 for 21. He's due. I don't believe in that. Um, I do believe it to some extent in some sports, but not at all in basketball. I, he's pulling the string, Caleb. I mean, he's he's not handing the cookie jar when your hand's over. He's pulling the string when he shoots. And that, but it takes it just takes one three to get you out of it. Not at this point. When's the last time he's had a great game, Caleb? Uh, he played well against Vanderbilt back in uh, middle of February. He went four of uh, six, four of five, middle, three. In the middle of March. I'm just saying. Um, and he was always what, Vescovi's role. We're forgetting what his role. Now, let's be fair. Vescovi, part of his less, where you're seeing less of him, part of this was by design. He was designed to take on a much lesser role this year than he has in, in years past. Is that fair to say? Because Dalton connects on the team. And so yeah, he was. So is he upset about that, maybe? No, he's accepted it well. I mean, 
it, these last two games are anomalies from actually how he played the, down the stretch. You got to remember, he went two of five from three against Alabama. He went two of four from three against Texas A&M, four of five against Vanderbilt. And this is what we're talking about. Muscovy doesn't have to go off. What he needs to do is just what you talked about. Those two or three times he's open, he's got to hit. And that's all he's really asked to do in a game now. And I still think he's capable of doing that. Wait, so you're telling me my whole college career and my confidence isn't great depends on just two or three moments? I'm and saying I'm supposed that... to respond to that? I mean, come on, Caleb. That's Listen, if he has to shoot a key three at the end, I, I love the guy. I hope I'm dead wrong. But I'm going to go, go ahead and tell you right now, I think there's a really good chance that it's a miss. <laughs> But if it's about his confidence, how do you explain him a week earlier at Alabama going to a five from three? Exactly what he was needed to do. Well, I mean, two of five of three is grand, grand. I mean, he hit, that's 40%. Well, I know he is, but okay. I, I think you've got, what's, what is he for the season? Look that up. I mean, that's oh, on the season. He's 34%. His, his three point numbers have dropped, but he's, what I'm saying is he's actually, he's gotten more efficient from three over the past, I'd say month. He had, we're forgetting how really bad of a stretch he did have. And no, it's see, not but, as. No, but so, so he's coming out of maybe his funk. I think it's I think, March. I think the last two games were anomalies. I don't think that's going to be as common in the SC, in the SEC and NCAA tournaments. I don't. And maybe the long layoff, by the way, will help him. Maybe that's no, it could hurt him. You're right. If he's dealing with some mental issues, the long layoff could hurt you because you got a fester on it more, but, or, I mean, if you're already down in the drain because of that, maybe it's your, it's his time to get right. I'm not, it's a, I, I will agree with you with this. Let's let me step back. It is a concern. It is Tennessee's biggest concern. I agree with you. I'm playing devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah, so. you just went, I'm the devil. Yeah, devil's advocate. <laughs> you just changed your mind completely. No, no, hold on. It is a concern, but I don't think it's a concern that can't be, I don't think it's out. It's that far out of the realm of possibility that this concern gets fixed pretty quickly. I, I think it's very possible that game was an anomaly on Saturday more than anything else. Okay, I, I'm. I think you're being overly optimistic. I think you're being overly optimistic for a guy that just seems to be in a funk the whole season. What was his three point percentage last year and three point percentage this year? If you could, if you could look that up. Well, his three point percentage is more just average this year because he's shooting 34% from three. He was 37% from three last year. He was 40% in 2021, 22. So he has regressed each year. In 2021, 22, he was Tennessee's best player, funny enough. It's not a good fit for the offense that they're running. I mean, he's. No, that's probably it. I mean, but he does not, a lot of other things too. He, do, he does do a lot of other things. I don't want to be that guy that says because you can't score, you can't play. He does a lot of other things, but unless you get him open, he's not getting open. Unless you're running picks on the perimeter, he's not getting open. So I think that is your major concern right now. You can't do anything drastically different with this offense because it's Dalton Central. This is a, the DK offense, and it ain't changing. Um, Rick Terry Jewelry Design, they want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals? That's a Tennessee tradition. RickTerryJewelry.com, RickTerryJewelry.com. But all that being said, I would still take Connect and this team, perhaps with a wounded Vescovi mindset, as opposed to what Tennessee had last year, wouldn't you? Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is the first time they've ever had a go-to score, but not just that, because I keep saying he's their most one. They got a go-to score and connect. They have Zakai Ziegler back, and we're seeing how much he was missed in the NCAA tournament last year now, given what he's doing. And then also, and this is a really underrated point, Jonas, I, the reason I say he's the most important player on the team, his development, Dave, has been the story of the year. I mean, Rick Barnes kept telling us all all offseason that this guy is going to be could turn into a star. It's it, he His development reminds me, and here's a great name I'm going to bring up for you. He reminds me of... Wayne Chisholm with his development. Remember Wayne Chisholm, the four-year guy, like the four-year guy under Bruce that just got better every year as a reliable center. Mm -hmm. I think Jonas Adu is that, um, but unlike Wayne Chisholm, Jonas Adu has real NBA potential. I can see that. Um, listen, I'm not going to complain. 
you got Dalton Connect on the team. I'm just going to tell you, if Scobie has to shoot the last shot, that's a concern. Um, Travis says they decided to let DK do his thing and beat the rest of the team. Do you think they we, – we talked about that before. Do you think that was at all the mindset from the balls? Is that a concern? You kind of addressed it earlier, but just yes or no quickly. You're You're not too concerned about leaning on Connect too much? Yeah, I'm not too concerned about leaning on Connect too much. Um, again, Zakai had 17 points, Adu had 11, James had eight. If you want to say anything, and I'm, I might say this, and I say this team goes as Adu goes, Adu maybe should have had 15 to 20 points instead of just 11. And this one, you know, Kentucky played a lot of small ball. Adu should have really been an unstoppable force under the basket, and he was just his regular efficient self under the basket. And so I would say, if you, but so rather than. 11 you should have gotten a few more shots from him out of that but yeah uh, outside of that i think it was just the perimeter defense i think they were tired and kentucky shot hot i think it's it's i think it's that that easy or that simple tennessee football just about to roll out what spring practice we'll have a defensive line preview with josh ward it's on off the hook sports.com and Caleb Calhoun breaks the internet on Saturday saying that Kelly Harper should be fired before the end of the season. What? Got cataracts. We can fix that. Never miss another moment. With a little help from Drs. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn at cctis.com. Hi, I'm Rick Terry, and we at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs pride ourselves in the highest quality craftsmanship from a family-owned business here in Knoxville for over 35 years. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we also take pride in being an affordable option for all your game day accessories, especially those fire opals. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we want to be your jeweler every day and especially on game day. Go Vols! Hi, Mike Davis here with City Heating and Air, reminding you to always dare to compare. Our team provides quality local heating and air service, installation, and maintenance across East Tennessee. We use only the best equipment like American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning for your residential, new construction, or commercial needs. Honesty, dependability, and customer satisfaction have been the cornerstones of our business since 1961. City Heat and Air. There's your man. We believe every day is a good day to be thirsty. With free samples on draft and lots of flavors to choose from, Tennessee Cider Company prepares a hard cider that's easy to enjoy. Some say it's the signature cider of the South. Others say it's the cure to your craving. They all say you'll savor every sip. The area of Gatlinburg has so much to offer, and so does Tennessee Cider Company. Add us to your list for shopping and fun experiences. You'll be glad you made the trip. Find our cidery in the Mountain Mall on the Gatlinburg Parkway. Sip smart. Sip the good stuff. Sip Tennessee Cider Company. Thirsty yet? Doors open at 10 a.m. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. You're listening to The Dave Hooker Show. A presentation of OffTheHookSports.com. The internet is full of pictures of each and every one of you. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off The Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Is there nothing you people can't do? Also available on OffTheHookSports.com. I'm going to do a quick impression of my phone on Saturday. Ding, 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 ding. That's what it did. Why did it do that? Because Caleb Calhoun decided to blow up Kelly Harper. And he makes a pretty good point. Kelly Harper very well could get into the NCAA tournament. Kelly Harper very well could have a team hit a ton of shots from the outside, have a hot night, and advance in the NCAA tournament. It sounds crazy, but 16's a beat one. Cinderella's happen in March. It could happen. Then, if you make the Sweet 16, seems a little weird to fire a coach, doesn't it, Caleb Calhoun? 
forgive me if I stole the thunder, but that was pretty much the crux of your argument, which I think is interesting, but I don't necessarily agree with. Yes. You can't let Kelly Harbor get red hot in the NCAA tournament. You can't give her a chance to keep her job. You can't have Dennis Felton at Georgia in the SEC tournament in 2008, which you would have. And they won the SEC tournament, got into the NCAA, and then you couldn't fire him, right? And then you couldn't fire him when they should have fired him anyway. You can't do it. It You can't make your decisions based on red hot runs. Just a quick NFL one real quick. Joe Flacco got really hot and led the Ravens to a Super Bowl. And then the Ravens gave him a hundred million dollar contract. They should have stuck to their guns and said, no, you're not getting this contract. I don't care that you just won the Super Bowl because he wasn't worth that money. Okay. The, you gotta be that. You can't just react to a red hot run. Now, Kelly Harper defenders are going to talk about how. No, it's. It's not just defenders. Firing a coach in the middle of the season is just bad business in general. No, it's not. It happens all the time. Not all the time. I'm sorry. You got to make this move because you can't give her a chance to sell keeping her job. Because there is no way you can keep your job after the coaching sequence on Saturday. Let me break down, guys, what she did. For those of you who aren't watching, let me break down two things, okay? Kelly okay. Harper. You know you're chucking this season, right? So what? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you think this team is going no, to go win ahead, a go ahead, go ahead with your point. Go ahead with your point. Go ahead with your point. Kelly Harper. Tennessee fought back from 23 down to take a two-point lead on South Carolina over the weekend. Undefeated number one South Carolina in the SEC tournament. A chance for the upset of the century. They are up 73 to 71. They get a stop. They get the ball. Jasmine Powell draws a foul with three seconds to go. You you assume the game's over. Powell, unfortunately for Tennessee, misses both of her free throws. South Carolina is out of timeouts. They rush the ball to midcourt. Okay, now here's where it's crazy. They, they have the ball with one second left at midcourt. Tennessee has a foul to give. Kelly Harper instructs her team, Jules Spear, to use the foul to give. Now, that's already next level stupid. So for those who don't understand, if you have a foul to give, you do that when they're already on your side of the court and they've already got an offense set up because then you give them less time to set up a play. You know what I'm talking about, right, Dave, when you have the foul to give? What you don't do is do it when they're – you don't do it when they're at midcourt with a second left and no timeouts and they're going to have to throw up a prayer. That's not when you use a foul to give. Now you give them a chance to inbound the ball and set up a shot. So that's already a really dumb decision. Then coming off the shot, Kelly Harper draws up arguably the worst defense I have ever seen in the history of college basketball. And I just got to share it with you guys real quick because. Dave, no, hold on. Uh, we're not going to share. Do we want to share this? Uh, okay, go Look ahead. Share this. Okay. I was just Look making sure I get pulled up. Go ahead. Cardoso banks in a game-winning three for South Carolina. Look at how open she is. Look at these three guys, or look at these three players right there inside the paint. Okay, why are you guarding the inbounds person? Why does that girl at the top of the key have her eye on the inbounds person? You know they're not going to pass it back to her with one second left. This is the worst defensive alignment I think I've ever seen called in the history of the sport. You can't let somebody who would – there are some decisions that are so stupid you got to fire on the spot. And there is Mario Cristobal running a play when he should have taken a knee. There is um, – there's a few others, but Mario Cristobal running a, knee when he should have, running a play when he should have taken a knee is one of those. That's another one of those. You can't ever call a play a defensive alignment like that. That's the most laughably worst defensive alignment I've ever seen called. It's fireable. you got to fire him right now. Need Drinker says they double teamed their best three point shooter. That girl got lucky, didn't call glass either. She did bank it in. Uh, Caleb Don Staley said she would have done the same. Well, that is scary. Uh, Mead, I got to be honest with you. I like the first part of your comment. I think the girl did get lucky. I think they double teamed the best three point shooter. But when another coach is saying that you have a great coach, when your opponent's saying that, you need to be very wary. Okay, so that's actually the greatest. That's yes. the greatest bit of evidence possible that Kelly Harper should be fired. Is that Don Staley's promoting Kelly Harper? Yeah, that's that's something that is a big red flag. If Don Staley says that looked like great coaching to me, that sounds like what Rick Patino used to say about Wade Houston. 
back in the day. And we all know how that turned out. I'm not going to make any decision right now. I'm not going to make an any decision based off Sweet 16. And here's why. Caleb, Sweet 16 is expected every single year. If that's the best you got, is slipping into the tournament and making the Sweet 16, given what Kelly Harper has done to this point, and that game that you just showed, which was on the screen for our video audio listeners, I'm going to fire after a Sweet 16 run anyway. Because it, I understand that it's harder to do, but it's not impossible to do. And Tennessee, you're, you guys on our Twitter board, you're not tone deaf. You know as well as I do that this program is not going in the right direction. We all know that. So make the change after the Sweet 16. I don't think you teach kids to go halfway through the season. I'll tell a quick story that I'm sure has been told by many of fathers. My son played lacrosse. Brought in a travel team that took 21 of the 24 spots. You aren't a part of the crew anymore. Uh, the, the high school did. And he no longer had a starting spot. He still played through the rest of the year. It's important. It's principled. It means something. I love you, Caleb. But no chance you make that change now. You make it now. You make it now. You don't give her a chance to have a selling point. Now, you will upset. I will, I'll give you this. You will upset many of the Lady Vol contingency by doing this, but I think it's time to upset the contingency anyway, because I think their hold and their stranglehold on what the program should be is what's holding the program back. And I'm just going to say that right off the bat. And guys, I'm, I'm going to, I, I got to address this because everybody keeps talking about how that was Camilo Cardozo's first three point make ever. And that was the player you leave wide open. I can get with that. If they didn't have two players guarding nothing on the court. Yeah, and the the I, I will agree with you on that part. the The most frustrating aspect is that everybody looked lost. I mean, it it wasn't. It was like they had like there was point two seconds, and they had thought it was over because you can't get a shot off. It was like they had completed the comeback. They had already won the game. Let's go. Let's get rowdy. This is exciting. It wasn't time to get rowdy and get exciting, Caleb. Exactly. And also, don't try to sell me. On Kelly Harper deserving credit for Tennessee playing South Carolina so well, because Dave, you and I both know in conference tournaments, you should throw results out the window. They're not indicative of how teams, how good teams are, right? Conference tournaments. Uh, no, they're not indicative at all, at all with the exception of maybe the ACC tournament. Uh, we, we see that from time yes. to time. Okay, but, so we're... but we so... haven't heard anything yet. Do you think they would actually ever consider doing that? No, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. Again, the um, it, it's – I'm going to get in so much trouble. But the Lady Vault contingency is almost like a mafia. They have so much power over the decisions you make for the Lady Vault basketball program. And they forced Philip Fulmer to hire Kelly Harper in the first place. And Well, I think he was pretty okay with that. No, he didn't want Kelly Harper. Mm, he, I mean, no, I, he, think he was, I think he was willing to do – what needed to be done to keep the job. I, Fair enough, I've said, but and I've said this before. I think Philip loves Tennessee. I think Philip loves Philip just a little more. I agree with you on that. I know I totally agree with you on that. I'm saying Philip Fulmer was looking for the best coach, and he admitted in the press conference. He said, "You know, I was just looking for the best coach." And then, you know, the speaking to the Lady Vol contingency, they kind of made it clear. You know, you got to hire a Lady Vol. You got to keep it in the family. I'm like, this is well, embarrassing. That's not, well, that's not okay. That's not the Lady Vols contingency's fault. That's Philip Fulmer's fault. He didn't have to listen to Lady Vols contingency. Well, no, you are right. Philip Fulmer was Philip Fulmer was going to play ball to keep his job as much as possible. You're right. He's not. He would never. Fulmer is never the type that would take the bold stance to anger a bunch of a, 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 a bunch of boosters. Is that fair to say? Like he's too yes. scared to do that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. I agree. Um, no. But I, he should have. And someone needs to do it. Someone needs to stand up to the mafia because they're moth. They're a mafia. What they're doing. To the Lady Vols. Here's the other thing. How important is it if Tennessee does make a change, get out of the Pat Summit legacy factor? I mean, if they hire Kara Lawson, 
God's sake, that would be awful because I love Carol Lawson. I think she's so talented. What if she's just an okay coach and then her legacy is run into the ground like Holly Warlick and Kelly Harper? It feels like we're trying to destroy every great lady ball that Pat Summit played for. And then it makes your decisions like these that much tougher. If this is the guy at Louisville, what's his name, Walls? Jeff Walls, that, yeah. That that Tennessee should have hired. You have and, the, and he's struggling. What do you say? Hit the road, Walls. It's easier to fire. Much easier. And it's brought to you by Apex Apparel Group Design. Man, Apex Apparel, check this out. I got the shirt on right now. It's embroidered. It's This one is the Tennessee Star, uh, T- TriStar Hats Company shirt. Look at this. That's awesome. If you're on our audio platform, you may not see it, but you can always go to orderapexapparel.com. It's right below. Or call Tyler at 865-919-3001. 865-919-3001. percent off your first order. 15% when it comes to spirit wear for a school or group. Any promo products, screen printing, embroidery, headquartered out of Knoxville, but a national dealer. Order apexapparel.com or just call Tyler and ask for that 15% off for your business. 865-919-3001. 865-919-3001. If you had to bet a million bucks, will Kelly Harper be the head coach of the Lady Balls next year? No. And I would bet that because I'll just say it. You guys may disagree with me. I have a lot of faith in Danny White because Danny White has a lot of faith in himself. And for the this is the first time Tennessee has had an athletic director that has the full faith and confidence in himself. Dave, you covered Mike Hamilton. You covered you covered Dave Hart at the start. You know Philip Fulmer. Do any of those athletic directors, do any of those people strike you as people who are 100% certain of what they're doing in the face of backlash from everybody else? No. No, but, Danny White's not scared. Okay, but here's the issue. It, it's not what people think of me. It's cash money, homie. It's exactly what it is. Cash money, cash money. Because you can get Kelly Harper for 1.4. Uh, others like Kim Mulkey cost LSU 3.4 million, I believe it was, or 3.2. So you're going to have to pay somebody more. You're going to have to make another financial commitment to someone, and you're going to have to pay off Kelly Harper because you fired her. Your football team is not rebuilt yet. When your football team is completely rebuilt and playing for national titles, then you can have your luxury item, which is the Lady Vols. Why were the Lady Vols great in the 80s and 90s? Happens to correlate with a guy coming back to Tennessee in a similar time frame, Johnny Majors hired back at Tennessee. The football coffers were full. People were throwing money at the athletic department left and right. Surely Johnny Majors was going to turn things around. It took a little longer than you thought. But what did that mean for Pat Summit? It meant if Pat Summit needed, and I'm not exaggerating, Something as small as a water heater fixed. She got it done because the money was there. The money right now is being spent on NIL and isn't going to be at an elite level until Tennessee wins a national title. I think we would all agree. When that money comes down the pike, you're in a different place. They're not in that place yet. Danny White was also 29 years old the last time Tennessee won a women's basketball national championship do you really think he feels in his heart what the lady balls mean to so many people i don't believe so i don't believe he would pull the trigger or will pull the trigger they just gave her a new contract part of this came from a source i spoke to i don't think they're going to fire her. i think they're going to be okay with the lady balls just languishing around And it'll give us something to talk about for years to come. But this is a luxury item. And right now, the Vols don't have money for a luxury item. I think Danny White is such a good hirer that he'll find somebody that you could get even cheaper than Kelly Harper. There's guys he's found. There's players. There's coaches he's found in the women's game. Women's basketball has actually been. He's the best hirer of athletic directors in the country. Women's basketball 
is his forte at hiring. Okay, he found somebody named uh, Felicia Leggett Jack. He got her to Buffalo, and everybody counted her out because she had gotten fired at Indiana in 2012, and nobody realized all the inner workings of why she got fired. There were a lot of things that were working against her at the time. She goes to Buffalo, turns that into a great program. She's now at Syracuse, and they're 23 and 6. They're going to the NCAA tournament her second year there. He's found coaches all over the place. He is the best hire. He's the best at finding coaches that Still you could have to ever. Kelly. I think you do it. And here, here's the You'll here's, have to play Kelly. So you're arguing that for right now, Tennessee should just focus on keeping women's basketball afloat and just be, hitting a baseline until they get the football program to where they're at, right? That's what you're saying? I'm not saying that's what I would do, but I'm saying that's what they're going to do. By the Here's way, why that I mentioned that Danny White was 29 years old last time. Yes. <laughs> yes. He won a national Here's he won. why I totally disagree with that. And okay. I want to get to this. And this is coming from a source. I'm not just throwing this out there. It's not going to happen this year, is what I was told. That doesn't mean you can't go out there and get 100 to 20 by Western Carolina in the first round and you don't get fired. But uh, that's what I was told right now. By the way, Women's if you search Lady Vols right now, Camilla Cardoza comes up. That's the one who hit the three. She's the one who hit the three and banked it <laughs> I know, in. No, but she's one of the first images that comes up. Just her, uh, just her profile page. Go ahead. Well, this is why I'm telling you. This is why this is a big deal. Women's basketball right now is gaining in popularity. There's the Caitlin Clark story that everybody's loved this year with her setting all the records. And then who watched yesterday's SEC title game between South Carolina and LSU? I did. Cardozo is trending because a massive fight broke out with Cardozo being involved, pushing Flaugé Johnson for LSU, knocking her to the ground. And then Flaugé Johnson's brother runs from the stands and jumps over the stands onto the court like he's going to fight a woman. For pushing his brother, which is hilarious. Okay, it was epic theater. Wait, and that is epic theater, and the women's game with Caitlin Clark and Iowa is getting bigger. But you don't ever expect them to turn a coin on that, do they? I mean, you're never going to make money on women's basketball. I think women's basketball is very much where. Look, people are underestimating this, but women's basketball has. It's not doing much worse than the NBA was doing in the sixties. And what I mean is it takes a long time for – it took a lot – remember this, guys. I don't know if you remember this. The NBA was a hockey – sub. The NBA was really bad in the 60s. That, here's my point. <laughs> the, it was a hockey-subsidized league. The point of the NBA was NHL owners needed to fill their stadiums when they didn't have hockey games. That's the whole reason the NBA was actually invented, was so they could find a way to fill the stadiums when hockey games weren't happening. It wasn't to make money. It was to offset some losses – period in the story. And then it got popular because of narratives. What happened in the sixties? Dave, you know, this Russell and Chamberlain that made a narrative in the NBA and it made it very popular. The Russell Chamberlain, the Celtics, can the Lakers get past the Celtics? The only reason the NBA didn't really take off until the eighties after that, it would have taken off in the seventies, the but they stupidly decided to create the ABA, not the NBA itself, but the ABA came out and they split all the talent up and all the talent was on half and half in the NBA and the ABA. Had it just stayed the NBA, it would have actually taken off in the 70s, not the 80s, like it did with Bird Magic. You're getting not these narratives. Got, not that we got mm -hmm. sidetracked there. No, but you're getting these narratives now happening in women's basketball. You are. Okay. The South Carolina, South Carolina LSU is becoming a really chippy rivalry. And then yesterday, I don't know if you saw, Kim Mulkey came out, who was, who was coaching LSU, obviously, and said she wished Cardozo pushed Angel Reese, her own player, instead of Flaugé Johnson, because Angel Reese is closer to her size. Which is like, you just said you wished a player pushed your one of your own players down? But I, I get it. Like, there was a narrative of, you know, why are you pushing down the little guard and not Angel Reese, who was playing dirty with Cardozo the whole game? These narratives were all out there yesterday. The Caitlin Clark narrative is out there. The Caitlin Clark-Angel Reese rivalry. That's all going into the NCAA tournament. And you know who nobody is talking about right now? The school most responsible for all of this stuff happening. I think what we have to ask ourselves as it pertains to the lady balls. And if you think you can actually make money in women's basketball, which Caleb seems to think you can, is the Caitlin Clark thing Sean White or is it snowboarding? And by that, I mean Sean White was the perfect guy, big red hair, long curly red hair to promote 
snowboarding and then it bounced up and bounced up a huge other level and became a real thing. Is Caitlin Clark that type of player that it becomes a real thing? The answer is H no. I mean, no, it's not. If Candace Parker, who was bigger, better, and fact is gorgeous, if if she can't make it a mainstream sport, then Caitlin Clark can't make it a mainstream sport. I, I, Caleb, I love you, and I think the Lady Vols are fantastic. But you're never going to turn a coin on that. Prove me wrong. Uh, brought to you by our friends at City Heating and Air Conditioning. CityHeatandAir.com. 50 years in East Tennessee. Integrity matters. Don't trust that fly-by-night HVAC company. Tell you that you need a new unit when it could cost thousands or more. City Heating and Air. CityHeatandAir.com. Caleb, you're never going to make money at women's basketball. Here's, here's I, hate to be, I hate to be that guy, but I'm that guy. Here's the problem with your Candace Parker take. Candace Parker has a little bit of chippiness and edge to her. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And you guys can, you guys can come at me, but it was a giant, giant flaw in, in the way she approached the game. Pat summit approached the game of making women's basketball. You know, I don't want to say the phrase gentleman's game. So I guess a ladies game. And what I mean by that is you play with class, you win with class and you don't carry yourself any other way. Is that fair to say that's how Pat Summit carried it? Yeah. You coached it? Yeah. That took the edge off of people like Candace Parker, who is low-key one of the best trash talkers in basketball, but she reserves it a lot because of what she was coached to do by Pat Summit. If you let Candace Parker beat Candace Parker, then you would have Angel Reese. Imagine Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark's attitude with Candace uh, inside Kansas Park, Candace Parker. That is what you need. Okay. Because you don't have that right now. You have Caitlin Clark, who's got a little bit of the chippiness, but Candace Parker was the perfect person to do that. The Pat Summit kind of coached out, you know, you play like a lady, you need to play appropriate and be good and, you know, carry yourself right and be a choir girl. And in my mind, I'm like, not everybody needs to be a choir girl. And Candace Parker has some edge. For instance, one of the miss moments, Candace Parker has real beef with Gina Oriema genuinely doesn't like her like him because he for those who don't know gina oriema kept candace parker off the 2016 olympic team specifically because candace parker didn't commit to play for uconn in 2004 i'm not kidding that's that is the narrative that needs to be out there more but they don't talk she doesn't talk about it that much because she's too classy and what i'm saying is we need a bit of we need a little bit of classlessness in women's basketball yeah. and I, that, I that's where angel reese comes into play and I mean, just don't think you're, I don't think you're ever going to make money on it. I, I, I don't believe just financially that's ever going to change. I think the goal is to lose less. Um, and that's going to be how it plays out for the remainder of college sports, however long that may be. But I'll, I'll and Tony, by the way, oh, sorry, keep going. Well, I was going to give you an interesting plan okay. that Missy could do that's a little off the beaten path, but go ahead with what you're going to say. I was just going to say for Tony Moser saying Caitlin Clark is the best women's player ever. Caitlin Clark could not start on the all-time Lady Vols team or the all-time UConn team. She wouldn't. I that we got a message for shout out in there. Uh, the uh, <laughs> um, I want to thank our friends at Ray Varner Ford Selection, best prices, hometown service in Clinton, Tennessee, worth the drive. RayVarnerFord.com, RayVarnerFord.com. They bring you the one, the only Jimmy Himes on Wednesday. Now, Caleb, there's another approach that Tennessee could take. What about just dialing down what you're doing with the Lady Vols? What about hiring a coach for $500,000 instead of $1.4 million and throwing another $900,000 at a guy like Nico? Now, I know that it's not the same fund, and I know that you would have to call one booster and say, hey, if you can, divvy up this part of your donation to spire sports because they need to pay nico's best receiver ever that's what i would do i'd dial it down i'd have a five hundred thousand dollar head coach i'd hope to go 500 until the football team won a championship and then i'd get serious uh, you don't like that at all do you but you kind of do that's what's tough i think <laughs> 
I think the move is short sighted because I don't I do think women's basketball is this is where we just disagree. I think women's basketball is growing more than you think it is. And I think Tennessee needs to be on the cusp of it growing because Tennessee is what happens if this happens, Dave? What happens if 50 years from now, women's basketball is a thriving sport and Tennessee is the Vanderbilt of women's basketball, which is for those who don't know, Vanderbilt was great in football in the 19 teens. And, you know, up until the 80s, you had these old guys that fought in World War One. They were like, you know, Vanderbilt was great back in the day. And, like, you're going to see people say that about the Lady Vols that are, like, 85 years old. And be like, why, in my day, we had the Lady Vols, Louisiana Tech, and UConn. And it's like, do you really want the Lady Vols to be that in 50 years? Well, when you have a legend like General Neyland or you have a legend like Pat Summit. Those sorts of things happen. You have decades long droughts in some cases. And that may well be the case with Tennessee's women's basketball program. In fact, it's already pretty close to that. We're about 15 years deep, kids. We are. We are. It's, it's, um, I mean, it's, and honestly, I think it's deeper than that. I think, I think Tennessee's drought would be much longer if they did. If, Pat Summit didn't strike gold and get Candace Parker. Because if you take out those two years with Candace Parker, Tennessee doesn't have a national championship since 1998. Now I know that's like, oh, can you take out that year with, you know, this or that? But that's, let's be honest. Candace Parker is the only 21st century Lady Vol that would start on the all time Lady Vol team. Smoky Mountain Red said, Do you feel having a man coach uh, ladies team uh, would be a negative in recruiting besides Gino Ariema? Um, I don't think so. I've never thought about it like that. I, we've always taught lady men, but I've never, I don't think a men's coach would not to pat some son did anything to help that narrative, but I don't think that would be an issue. I wouldn't have any issue with that. Would you, let's just, pretend I didn't say that coming up here in just a moment. Uh, we will. You're right. He does Bible study now, guys. He does Bible study with his new wife, the same way Hugh Freeze does Bible study. I'm sure. It's fine. And it, it may be altruistic, but a lot of people say that and nothing's changed. But anyway. No, no, oh, no. I, I think anybody who says that does nothing changes. That is always cover for I'm still a pig. I bet Bobby Petrino probably says he does Bible study. Well, it's not always, but I, Tennessee's defensive line is going to be pretty good. How about some football up next? New poll question on our YouTube page. Please take part in that. Is it okay if the balls get bounced by a hot team like Kentucky on Saturday in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament? I am stunned by the results so far. He's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. I'll share those results in two minutes off Thug Sports sand and salt water, the beach is a very relaxing place. Unless you wear contacts. Ow! Open your eyes to the best the beach has to offer with LASIK Vision Correction from Campbell Cunningham Laser Center. Ah. Sports Treasures in North Knoxville is one of the South's largest sports cards and memorabilia dealers, featuring over 10 million sports cards from vintage to modern. Sports Treasures carries a full line of hobby boxes, singles, autographed memorabilia, Tennessee Vol collectibles, fan cave decorations, and so much more. See a museum full of collectibles at Sports Treasures, 4819 North Broadway in Fountain City, and Sports Treasures on Facebook. Sports Treasures, where the real sports fan goes to shop. Have you seen the latest TriStar Hats Co. product? TriStar Hats Co.? What's that? You know, those really cool hats, shirts, tumblers, and even license plates with three stars like the official Tennessee flag and stripes like the American flag. Pretty patriotic if you ask me. Ah, gotcha. Seen those. Those are cool. Where can I get them? Simple. TriStarHatsCo.com. And if you order now, there's 10% on any order $50 or more. Plus, use the promo code HOOKED. With the promo code HOOKED, you get 10% off. That's HOOKED. And don't forget free shipping with any order over 50 bucks. Stock up at TriStarHatsCo.com. That's TriStarHatsCo.com. There are plenty of wannabes out there, so make sure you go to TriStarHatsCo.com for the best quality and customer service. Will do, and I'll be sure to use the promo code HOOKED. That's HOOKED when I do to save an additional 10% off. TriStarHatsCo.com. TriStar Hats Co. is a trademark of TriStar Hats Co. LLC. Any use without express written consent is prohibited. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones. 
Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win. Thanksjones.com. Uh, who's this guy? Hello, wizard. The Dave Hooker Show. Who? A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave Hooker. To this day in Tennessee sports history, very shortly, but we remind you to go to tristarhatsco.com, tristarhatsco.com, and you can take part in purchasing the most incredible TriStar hats that are out there. And they're the officially licensed ones. Their new spring styles are in 20% off, 20% off. So check them out. They are fantastically gorgeous hats and apparel that are unbelievable right there on the screen, 20% off. Those are tight. You don't have to be a UT UT fan just to like those. Maybe you're just proud that you grew up in uh, Tennessee, uh, Caleb, as both of us did. So it is time. I got my email this morning. It was exciting. It was was neat. Uh, I got my email for spring practice starting next week. The first availability will be Monday to have a bunch of guys try not to say anything and then it'll be Wednesday and Thursday. So, uh, but Tennessee does hit the practice field. So we want to get to a preview of Tennessee's defensive line that is on off the hooksports.com. If you would like to read it by Josh Ward. So let's go ahead and dive in to this day in Tennessee football history before uh, the, we talk defensive line with Josh Ward's column again on offthehooksports.com. And it is time for this day in Tennessee sports history, and it's brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals, a Tennessee tradition, rickterryjewelry.com, rickterryjewelry.com. Rick Terry Jewelry Design. What happened on this day in Tennessee sports history? What is today again? It's March the 11th, am I right? I know what day it, it is. is. Somebody's got a yes, big day. It is. No, no, yeah. It was uh, um, two years ago, today, Tennessee began its first run to winning the its first SEC tournament championship run in over 22 years. They beat Mississippi State 72 to 59. And it was a day that Texas AM, I believe, that same day, ended up pulling off the upset of the tournament that cleared the path for Tennessee to make their run to the SEC Tournament Championship because Texas A&M upset an Auburn team, 67-62, to that would have absolutely beaten Tennessee in the SEC Tournament title. Yep, there you go. This day in Tennessee football history brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. Certainly a different day than we're facing today with a disappointing weekend. But football practice is right around the corner. Uh, Caleb, Tennessee's defensive line in a preview by Josh Ward, it is online, should be very, very good. How good do you think they can be stacked up to other NCAA, other SEC teams, I should say? Tennessee could be defensive line U for college football once again, very, very soon. Now, it's not going to be defensive line U the way it was under Tron Chavis. Because when they were defensive line you back then, as you know, Dave, the focus was the defensive tackles and those really big guys that could kind of, you know, that the the focus was stopping the run with the defensive line. Is that fair to say? Yes. In the Chavis years? Yes. That, yes. This team is more about being serviceable and stopping the run, but unleashing the hell of a pass rush. And that's what this team is going to be designed to do. So... Looking at the defensive line, and we can just start with the defensive tackles. I mean, the defensive tackles are there to be serviceable and do their jobs, but not leap off your screen. That's kind of the way Tim Banks kind of designs the defense because they want to play off Heupel's, what what Josh Heupel does offensively. So Bryson Eason, Amari Thomas, Omar Norman Lott are the guys you're going to be happy with, with how they play in the middle. The potential leap off your screen guy, as you keep talking about, Dave, is Elijah Simmons. If he becomes a leap off your screen guy, you all of a sudden change the defensive tackle situation from serviceable to very, very, very deadly, right? Maybe maybe elite. I don't think that's too far of a stretch. I agree. That's not too far of a stretch at all. So that's the real big one. And then there are a couple of hybrid guys, um, mostly that, that you want that can line up in the middle or on the edge. And we're talking Dominic Bailey. Tyree West, David Hobbs, those are, and Nathan Robinson. 
those are kind of the main ones that should be able to do that. And don't forget, Jason Jenkins is still on the team too. So those that's a focus. But right now, the star part of the defense is, as we know, the edge rushers. Because Tennessee has James Pierce, who I think you and I both agree is going to be the best edge rusher in college football this year. All-American, probably. Can I ask you a quick question, not to get you sidetracked? But I would have said 10 years ago that defensive tackle is more important than defensive end, despite what pass rushers can do with strip sacks. 10 years ago, I would have said I'd rather have an elite defensive tackle than an elite edge rusher. I've changed in that. I flipped. Have you flipped? Were you ever that way in the first place? I think it's very dependent on how your team is built. Okay. Um, because, I, okay, put it this way. When, when, when the Colts had Peyton Manning, edge rushers were more important. Dwight Freeney, Robert Mathis. Remember, it was Peyton Manning, get us a lead. Dwight Freeney, Robert Mathis. We can unleash them now when the other team has to pass all the time. It's exactly how this team is built. That's exactly how this team is built, yes. But then there's still the Rams a couple of years ago when they had Aaron Donald. And let's be honest, you're not trading Aaron Donald for anybody in the NFL, are you? If you have him on defense. All right, well, let me let me make it a little more relatable to our listeners. Would you rather have James Pierce or John Henderson in this defense? Oh, this defense. That's actually one of the best questions you've ever asked because that is a really <laughs> good question. That's an amazing question, Dave. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Before you answer why you have time to think, let me tell everybody it's brought to you by Sports Treasures. I was there over the weekend, picked up an awesome piece of Steelers memorabilia for a friend of mine who was celebrating a birthday. They've got over 5 million sports treasures and so much more. Follow on Facebook for the best sports memorabilia. They have daily updates, uh, Sports Treasures TN on Facebook, Sports Treasures TN. Absolutely love them. So are you taking John Henderson or are you taking James Pierce for this defensive line? I'm still taking John Henderson right now. I, I, and, and Dave, you're talking about, I mean, I'm just going to say it. And you guys can call me crazy because there's Reggie White and Doug Atkins played in, uh, in the middle. Steve DeLong from the 1950s or 1960s, the first Outland Trophy winner from Tennessee. John Henderson is the greatest Tennessee defensive tackle ever. Okay. I mean, Can yes, you, Albert Hainsworth. If he's, Albert Hainsworth had more talent. Bro, yeah, from the neck up, if Albert Hainsworth's okay. I mean, it was close. It was closer than I think you sometimes remember. Well, yes, but remember in 2000, Albert Hainsworth hadn't arrived yet, and John Henderson still won the Outland Trophy without any help from Albert Hainsworth. And there are a couple of players um, on the defensive ends those years that put up James Pierce numbers. One more number 90, and his name rhymed, his first name rhymes with Mill. Um, that put up James Pierce numbers because he played played next to John Henderson. Is that fair to say, Dave? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, in Mill this defense, Overstreet. <laughs> yes, Will Overstreet. Uh, bit in this defense, I'm I'm taking Pierce. I'm I'm taking Pierce. So I have to pick between Pierce and Henderson. Now, I know that sounds like pure heresy, but. A strip sack, one strip sack can can really end your chances of beating this Tennessee football team if Nico is half the player that I believe he'll be, and this offense is half as good as I believe it will be. I mean, the bottom line is if you if you turn the ball over via a strip sack and you have and you're Tennessee and you've got one more possession, that's probably going to be a touchdown or a field goal. And and it doesn't just have to be a strip sack. How many times do we see a pressure on a second or third down put you behind the chains in a long down and distance? That happens a lot. So I think it's James Pierce. I feel like a bad person for even saying that. <laughs> Colton says crazy Caleb's takes rubbing off on Dave. Uh, and he also, by the way, I don't know how many people watch this, but Stand on business, Josh, is going to be a thing. Uh, for, for the record, if you didn't see the short, check it out. Please subscribe to the channel for more goofiness, as Caleb made me look like a goofball, and I laughed all weekend over it. 
Am I a bad football person for saying that I would take the edge rusher over the tackle? I feel naughty. It depends on the system and the player. That's where I met. Oh, like, in this it, case, that I would take Pierce over Henderson. No, I feel naughty. I feel like you have all. You know what? Since we started this show, you disrespected John Henderson because, and I feel like <laughs> I, I'm going to say this. I feel like there is a resurgence. I feel like there is a forgetfulness of John Henderson. And I'm just going to give you guys an example. This is at my old place. Um, I was asked to do a Mount Rushmore of Tennessee players for the last 30, 40 years. And I was asked to name, I was told that Peyton Manning and Reggie White have to be locks, which okay, they have to be locks. I wanted to do, I did Al Wilson as my third. And then like, I, I was very tied between John Henderson and Eric Berry as my fourth. Everybody came to me and was like, well, Eric Berry, obviously, Eric Berry, obviously, obviously Eric Berry over John Henderson. And in my mind, I'm like, and then I saw last year, there was a campaign to retire Eric Berry's number which there shouldn't be. He shouldn't get his number retired as much as I love him because he didn't finish at Tennessee, which is fine. But no campaign to retire John Henderson's number. And I'm thinking in my mind, where is this idea that Eric Berry was so much more accomplished for Tennessee than John Henderson was? Uh, well, he was a consensus All-American, wouldn't you? I mean, I think- So was John Henderson. Both were two-time All-Americans who won the award for the best player at their position. Were they both unanimous or consensus? I don't want to get caught up in the minutia. They were both elite players. To me, I would take Barry because of his versatility, but it's very, very close. I, but and I, I say that, and I almost go backwards. And I would no, I think I would take the defensive tackle. Okay, but actually, okay, you would take Barry over Henderson as a player. No, but in terms of a, I'm ta- no, I'm taking that back. I would take. Henderson. Okay, fine. But also in terms of a greater legend, I don't like Barry getting treated as a greater legend because. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this. Barry left after his junior year. John Henderson decided to come back for a senior year when he didn't have to. That has to matter for something. Caleb, and do you mind notice that Caleb just gave me an all whatever type of thing? <laughs> all whatever you think, Dave. No, it was, uh, I'm trying to say close. that. Like, I'm, I'm saying that, that if I told you you're starting a college program, you have to admit it's close between Barry and Henderson. I'm not sure how we got so far off topic. But you have to admit well, it's close. I'm even considering taking Barry over Henderson, but that's not the question. The question is who's a greater legend for Tennessee. And okay. Henderson stayed till his senior year. Well, that's not the question. The question is the would question you is take who James Spears? <laughs> we've completely butchered. We've taken the question out back and beat it with a stick is what we've done. <laughs> but it, getting back to the point, you would take John Henderson over James Pierce in this defense, correct? Yes. Okay, There's now wait, layer. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Play this, play this game with me. It, it, now, I'm just talking about one season. I'm not talking about whether he stayed or not. I don't care about all that. Eric Berry should have left, and we all know it. He didn't do anything wrong. Would you take Albert Hainsworth for one season over James Pierce? No, and that's where I was going with next, and I will tell you okay. why. Okay, wait it's a, a second. One. Wait a okay. second. All right. Not all done. right. Would you take Jesse Mahalona? over James Pierce in this system. A light defensive tackle, kind of like the guy you just mentioned, Mr. Donald. There's a similarity there. Yeah, in terms of fit for the defense, Jesse Mahalona is perfect for this defense. I know. I would take great. I I love Travis, man. I would take Jesse Mahalona over James Pierce in this defense. Am I insane? No, I kind of agree with you. Jesse Mahalona, specifically, you have a point. Um... There's something else we have to throw in here. This is why I said I take Pierce over Hainsworth. Let's talk about head cases for a minute. And look, I'm not trying to throw Pierce under the bus, but he did have a legal issue in December. Yes. Dave, let's be honest. Now, yes, John Henderson didn't qualify academically in 98, but from everything I've read, once he qualified, he became a very stand-up, disciplined citizen, right? Like a very yeah. good guy. No doubt. Um, like if 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 you wanted an intimidating six seven guy marrying your daughter, John Henderson's the guy, right? And she's allowed uh, to slap him across the face, like in those Jaguars pregame videos. Yes, exactly. And but Henderson knew when to turn it off and when to turn it on. Unlike Hainsworth, who didn't, who couldn't really figure out that line. Hainsworth had mental issues. James Pierce has already gotten in trouble in a way that Henderson never did. Henderson had an academic issue, but never got in trouble. And Mahalona was about a stand up of a guy as you could ask for as in a human, right? And mm-hmm. so I think that matters too. We have to question if James Pierce is going to do something stupid that keeps him from playing now. And never had that question about John Henderson once he got on the field. Um, so that's why I'm 
Yeah, I take Mahalona and Henderson over. I take Mahalona because of the fit for the defense. Henderson because he's just amazing over Pierce. But I would take Pierce over Hainsworth because, yeah, you, you don't well, know what you're going to get. Hindsight's twenty twenty, but if I knew with Hainsworth that I could motivate him by telling him to get angry like dodgeball, which is essentially what Jeff Fisher did, then I would go Hainsworth over Henderson for this defense. I know that's insane. Portions of the program brought to you by BetUS. That 125% bonus is yours for the take-in and right below. America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. All right, so I did it. I'm taking Mahalona over James Pierce. Maybe I'm insane. And by the way, rest in peace. Um, I will just say that that was one fantastic young man to cover and always had a smile on his face. And I do want to take a second to remember him as uh, just a, a great young, great young man. Great to cover. Um, so no great way to make a transition from that to this, but we're going to try. Hit the like and subscribe button. The SEC and Big Ten could be theoretically axed in a 14-team format. Uh, the auto bids, that is. Give us the latest on how this 14 team playoff, which I'm not sure if it's going to, maybe it gets enacted before this season even happens with the way it's moving, but give us the latest on what's happening with the SEC and Big Ten and other conferences are going crazy. So after the 12 team playoff went into effect two weeks ago, well, it didn't go into effect, but they finally revamped it and adopted the 5 7 model, which is five conference, the top five conference champs and seven at large for the 12. 14 team playoff talk immediately began. And the biggest reason was the SEC and Big Ten, because college football and conference commissioners and people that run the sport are just not the brightest people. They don't realize things that I had foresight of three years ago, which is they learn, oh no, if we do a 12 team playoff, our conference championship games won't matter. File that under the category of duh, you should have known that five years ago. Okay, so they decided to go back to the table and say, hey, Let's make them matter. The way we make it matter is we make it a 14-team playoff, and our champions ought to get the two buys, the SEC and Big Ten. And so there came this 3-3-2-2-1 model where three SEC teams, three Big Ten teams, two ACC teams, two Big 12 teams, and one group of five teams would all get to the playoff. A 14-team model. It was gaining traction. It seemed like everybody was behind it. Well, now it's come back to the drawing board because it comes, it turns out, the ACC and the Big 12 are very, very unhappy with automatic buys reserved for the SEC and Big Ten champions. Okay, so let me let me ask you this. Out. Let me ask you this. If you're in the position of those conferences, how careful are you being where you step? It's like taking a dog out. Be careful where you step, or you might get left out of the playoff altogether. Don Self is your State Farm agent in the Chattanooga area. Call 423-396-2126 or go to donself.net, donself.net, Don Self. Customer service still matters. 40 years, they built their business on taking care of their customers in the greater Chattanooga area. Donself.net, donself.net. Caleb, better be careful. You better be careful if you're another conference and you're thumbing your nose at this idea, if you're saying nay to this idea, because you might just get left out of a playoff altogether. I'm going to go a step further. They I might think shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> they might shoot the conference commissioner of said conference. Yes. Right in the leg, just a flesh wound. I think – this was a Machiavellian move by the SEC and the Big Ten because this happened right after they formed their alliance, and this is what I'm talking about. I think they baited the outcry from the Big 12 and the ACC, so that just gave them leverage to walk away and say, fine, we'll form our own league. I think their long-term desire is to just break off anyway. And I think this is, I think what they want to do is win the PR battle when they do it. And so I think their goal is to say we try peace we're out we're forming our own league and then they'll take the few remaining teams from like the acc or wherever 
and that 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 are going to collapse and they'll bring them into the fold and they'll call it a day. I think this thing is so they are so down the road, the SEC and the Big Ten, of creating their own league and not caring about anybody else from any other conference that I think that they baited the Big 12 and the ACC to do this. And that's where this is headed. You know that I think crazy Caleb is sometimes conspiracy Caleb. But, I, but I'll tell you something. I, I think you're on to something because this makes – a lot of sense represented by banks and jones banks and jones well it's because they're tennessee's trial attorney you can play to win with banks and jones because they'll go to trial you've heard of other lawyers they say they'll go to trial and fight for you they won't they just want to settle that's the easiest way out well that's not banks and jones led by t scott jones they won't settle they'll go to trial for you tennessee's trial attorney they play to win truly Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banksandjones.com. Doesn't it feel like the most natural method would just to be have an AL and NL like Major League Baseball does? Doesn't it feel like that's just kind of organically happened with the Big Ten in SEC? You can't stop the ocean from throwing waves at you. It feels like the motion of the ocean is going towards an ALNL fill. Now, I wouldn't have made that argument, Caleb, before the Big Ten went out and got UCLA and USC and other West Coast teams, which at the time I said was incredibly stupid. However, I'm going to go conspiracy Caleb here, not crazy Caleb, conspiracy Caleb. What if the Big Ten Commissioner Petit, is that his name? Petiti. Petiti. He's such a petite guy. Yes, he's a petite guy. <laughs> look, at, look at Dave examining his body. Okay, so uh, what if Greg Sankey calls up and says, hey, uh, Petit, oh, I'm sorry, Petiti. Um, what about you go out and get these teams? And we've got the South pretty much locked down. You've got the important teams. And we had the West Coast, and we've got ourselves a new NCAA. What if that phone call happened? That's how smart I think Greg Sankey is. You and I differ on that a little bit, but would you rule out that there's a collusion? Because why in the world was it such big news? Think about this for, for a second, guys. And yes, you're right, Dan. Eight was plenty. Think about this for a second, guys. You had a situation in which the, the Big Ten could go get whoever they wanted yet they go get West Coast teams from the TV market. None of that has made any sense. This would actually make sense why they went out and got two teams from L.A. You look at what is built right now, just in the Big Ten, just in the SEC, they have the mega conference right now. It's assembled. It's how many teams? 34? 34 right now, yes. And it's probably, I think, I think it'll end up at like, 45, 50. I think it'll get to 50 when it's all over. I've been told 42 to 44, but you could be right. So there's basically a mega conference already, and they got a few spots left. Don't be surprised if they're able to cherry pick a few teams. And maybe after the ACC blows up their television contract, which I know is still like eight years away, but it is all about that motion, as Smoky Mountain Red says um, on our message board. Caleb? Is that conspiracy enough for you? No, I think you're right. First of all, the hairspray, the musical was coming right into my head. Motion of the ocean or the sun in the sky. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> never seen that. It's great. It's a great musical. It's a great musical. You should go see it. Um, okay, so. No man should see a musical other than Greece. Go ahead. No, that's not true. I love musicals. Um, but what I. Here's this is where this is where it's going to get a little different. See, I actually think it's going to be bigger because here's what I think is going to happen with the SEC and the Big Ten. They're going to form their own de facto NCAA. They're going to create conferences within their conference. Does that make sense? So, like, yes. say the SEC ends up with like. Sorry, people. Colton made me laugh. I hate it when people do that. You're Colton's too clever because he referenced a stand business, Josh. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> so I guarantee you, Eli Drinkwitz doesn't sound like that. But it threw me off, and now I've thrown Caleb off. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Say the SEC gets to 24 teams, and this is what I see happening long term. This is a you can call me crazy. The SEC gets to 24, the Big Ten gets to 24. They each have three 18 divisions. Those divisions are the conferences within the conference. So what they do, and this is what I think is going to happen, you're going to see the college football playoff incorporated in to the divisions and the conference title. So I think what you're going to see happening, I should write a column on this one day because this is how I think the it's going to go. The, the three 18 conferences, the winners of those three, the, the top two teams of all, of all three of those conferences will play on conference champ, championship Saturday. Is that fair to say? They'll play each other on conference championship Saturday. Mm -hmm. So that'll be eight, 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 eight. That'll be six games of 12 teams playing each other on conference championship Saturday. The winners of those go to a college football playoff and then two wild, which is six teams, and then two wild cards are selected from the other conferences and leagues. That's what I think is going to happen. All right. All right. Well, I think it, listen, gone from crazy Caleb to conspiracy Caleb to, I think, correct uh, Caleb. I think there are all kinds of moves being made behind the scenes. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's any question about that moves being made behind the scenes that could, um, that could be beyond our knowledge right now a little bit. How about more recruiting and prizes? Well, real quick, I got one question, Dave. Yes. What's the difference between crazy conspiracy and truth? I've never heard this before. I'm interested. About five years. Really. Whatever a crazy. It's it's usually a crazy conspiracy, and then five years later, it's true. It's confirmed true. What did the comedian say to the horse? Why the long face? Nay. <laughs> if you would like prizes and more recruiting info, then you can join Hooker's Corner for the Inside Skinny on Off the Hook Sports. Recruiting information interaction with everyone at Off the Hook Sports, as well as weekly and monthly grand prizes, which is a Brew McCoy autographed helmet. That'll be this month for our March prize. Ready to just buy instead? You can celebrate Tennessee's revolutionary lawsuit against the NCAA with our exclusive T-shirt that's going to press this week. So it's really nice. If you can pull it up, Caleb, uh, it's really nice. We'd love for you to check that out. But it's going – we're printing our batch this week. So it's a one-run sort of thing. So if you want one, and it's awesome, you can celebrate Tennessee's revolutionary lawsuit against the NCAA with our exclusive T-shirt. We also have – the 1998 national championship team celebrate 98 the untold stories behind the balls 98 national championship written by yours truly certainly appreciate that so uh there you go so okay what about classic what about uh is there your favorite classical music movie is wait classical mu mu music movie no, I was trying to set something up. It didn't work at all. But your favorite musical? Favorite musical? Hmm, that's tough. Probably go Rent. Rent was really good. Hit that um, like and subscribe button. You only go Rent like that. There we go. He 